I think it must have been over 50 years ago, I was watching one of the first 9-11s that went past me. I was living in England at the time and I saw this 9-11 go by and it had a mostly beautiful noise on the exhaust. Um, I can't remember what model it was, but it was a typical uh, six-cylinder old Porsche 911. But what a noise. And I, I, I must have been, I don't know, 20 or less at the time. And I thought, wow. Now that is, I think subconsciously, I wanted to have a car like that. I thought, wow, that is really classy. And then, of course, at the, the time, these 911s had just come out, you know. I thought, wow, what the hell is this? So I thought, nah, I'm, I think I've got this this little um, uh, interest to be um, speedy, uh, to be a uh, fast, perhaps a fast driver. I suppose when I get old, then I'll have to slow down a bit, but I'm not sure when that's going to be. When I get tired of this little Honda, I always take the, uh, my other little machine out for a ride, and uh, that's quite nice. Had it modified, of course, as you, know, as you do. And uh, what I like to do sometimes, I think I'd like to take it down to um, Uppington, because they've got a runway there, which is almost five kilometers long, and I want to do a, a speed test just to see what the top end of the car is. Oh, flipping neck. Oh, this is not funny anymore. Mm. Ah. Ah. Oh, gee whiz. Home at last. There we go. Ah. Yeah, this is quite painful. Oh. I want those pills that make you younger. Make myself a cup of tea in a minute. Mm. Just take the weight off my legs. Oh. Oh, that's better. Hey, where's. For now, and uh, I'm getting a bit bored, so I think I'm going to close this book and I think I'll take my little, uh, my little dinky toy car for a little spin around the block. I might even go to Uppington, who knows. So I think we'll close this and see what we can do. Nice cup of tea. So, yep, I'll go and get my bag ready to go away for a few days and hopefully we'll have a lovely time. It's a good day for travelling as well. Lovely day for travelling. Oh, now let's see. Ah, you know what? I'm in a bit of a mood, so I think we'll leave my trusty Honda here and we'll take my little runabout. Yes, I yes, haven't used him for a while, so we'll take my runabout around the block and see how it behaves. Mm. Maybe it'll help my leg a little bit, who knows. Hello everybody, uh, my name's Barry, I don't even want my surname, Barry Bigwood, very, very unusual I know. Um, yes, the car I'm driving um, is a Nissan 2012 GTR R35, um, the car's been modified quite a bit. The car's a 2012 one, so it's 10 years old now, I've had the car for about at least 9 years, um, and it was standard when I bought it. Um, it's a DBA as opposed to the CBA models and of course I got a bit fed up with it because it was standard so things that people do they send their cars overseas to get it modified and that's exactly what I did. I sent it overseas to a company called SVM in Pommy. They kept it for six months, did some heavy modifications and flew it back to me um, and that was about let me think seven years ago something like that. They ran it at Santa Pod 
uh, against a, a Bugatti and uh, it ran a 9.7, which wasn't all bad then. What was that? Seven years ago. The Bugatti was 10 point something. So it just beat the Bugatti. But that was then. The latest Bugattis, are, I think they're a bit quicker. But anyway, so I'm quite happy with it. And of course, theoretically, it should be faster than that now. But we'll see. We'll see tomorrow. It's a big, it's a big thing. And it uh, depends on the wheel spin and all the rest of it. I've never tried this before. I don't think I've ever tried launch control before. So it's all going to be a big thing tomorrow. And I just hope uh, we have good weather and the uh, car behaves itself. So when it was overseas, they changed the crankshaft, so it's running a, um, a short block now. It's 4.1, usually it'd be 3.8, but it's 4.1. Changed the rods, pistons. We've had the valve springs cha uh, changed, so the car can run, sa run safely now to 8,000 instead of 7,000, which is normal. Turbochargers, have been, I can't remember what they are, they're some fancy Garrett ones anyway, Garrett turbochargers, they've both been uh, replaced. The car runs on ethanol, so it's a flexi fuel vehicle. Gearbox has been completely rebuilt with old bins, um, straight cut gears and all the rest of it. So it can take perhaps up to 2,000 brake horsepower, probably more. And this isn't, this is probably at the most, maybe about 1,200 or something like that. Gearbox is very, very strong. All right, very strong because all the old bins uh, gears have been changed completely. The main shaft, secondary shaft, all, all six gears have been changed. So it's very strong. And I've been told uh, it'll take probably at least 2,000 brake horsepower for anything it's going to even wear. And I've done, I don't know, maybe 20,000 k's on it since it's been modified. And as far as the gearbox is concerned, no issues at all. You get one or two little whining errors, that's because they're straight cut gears. But it hasn't got worse, that's seven years ago. You know. so, and I don't race it, but I do now and again do naughty things. Um, but so the gearbox, as far as I know, is in perfect condition, unlike me. Just 800 and something k's. Oh, what a journey. What a journey. Just brilliant, brilliant. And the car made it. I think I need a beer. <laughs> After all that. I'm putting Esmond in my car, as you normally do. Because I need to uh, bump up the octane rating for tomorrow's uh, race at um, Uppington Airport. And obviously, if you've got ethanol in the car, it'll make a lot of difference from an octane rating, which means you can increase the boost on the uh, turbochargers, and it will give you more power at the end of the day, quite a lot more power. So we're trying to get in, a, if we can, at least 50% um, ethanol in, in the car, which will mix with uh, 95 octane. So it'll provide a lot more power at the end of the day, so the octane increase. sitting here now at um, Uppington Airport and tomorrow we're going to uh, race it on their runway. Their runway is nearly five kilometres long. Um, we're going to race it and try and do a top end run as well, as well as say a standing quarter and all, all the usual stuff. Um, and it's a nice little thing that I uh, wanted to do and so I can tick it off my uh, bucket list. So the time has arrived, uh, tell us how you're feeling. Well, nervous I must say, nervous, uh, anxious, um, but I'm excited at the same time, certainly excited. Something on my bucket list for the last, I don't know long, quite a long time now. All our permits are in order, everything else, so I'm very much looking forward to this. We did a run, completely the whole runway, and it looks like it's almost five kilometers long in perfect condition and the width i don't know must be almost 100 yards wide i don't know but there's plenty of runoff area so just in case idiot face you know loses it or something hopefully i'll, I'll just spin but hopefully we'll not come to that but it's a wonderful runway i think it's the largest in the southern hemisphere as far as i know and it's in beautiful condition and i've got to hurry up because i believe the plane is coming in in about an hour so i better not bugger around too much
things off my bucket list. It was over 200 miles now, I'm not sure what it was, but I've done that, never done that before in my life. Fantastic, fantastic. Jeez, not bad. Now the next thing we'll probably be trying this in a Bugatti, but you know, one step at a time, one step at a time. I was very, very excited. Gee whiz, that was fantastic. I'm glad we've done this, and I'm glad I've ticked it off my uh, bucket list. Antarctica's the next thing, but not with this. What a fantastic day. For you guys, the weather, it's from my, I mean, look at it, it's unbelievable, unbelievable.